So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the A1 Mini and why it's my favorite printer for 2024. Wow, am I the only one struggling with the fact that it's 2024? Um, that was so weird. I had to set it like three different times in the intro to get it right. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing a quick kind of like overview on this printer, not really an in-depth review. Um, I have some interesting stuff that I'm doing to this printer and that I have modifications I have planned for it. Um, and those videos will be out soon. Uh, but yeah, this is just an introduction to the A1 Mini. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you do, please feel free to subscribe. We're going to be looking at some of the features of this machine and I'm going to give you some of my thoughts on why it's the best 3D printer for 2024, well, going into 2024. Um, but to be honest, I haven't got a chance to try out its bigger brother yet and maybe I will. Uh, but so far, this is my top machine going into 2024. So just quickly talking about the specs, it has a 180 by 180 by 180 build volume. Um, it comes with the full auto calibration that you can find on the P1P and the X1C. Uh, four color printing with the AMS light. Uh, they claim that it's under 48 decibels uh, in silent mode and it obviously has f uh, full metal linear rails and bearings. Um, it's a really good quality machine and really sturdy built, especially for a cantilever design, which I wasn't expecting from a cantilever design. I thought it would be, you know, not flimsy, but like I thought the gantry would definitely not be as solid as it actually is. So one of the standout features for the A1 Mini, to be honest with you, is the AMS light and how it works with the AMS light. Um, for me, I honestly always thought I didn't really want to do multicolor printing or didn't have a need for it. Uh, but now that I have it, it's hard not to do it. So what I mean by that is you can see here I'm printing this SpaceX uh, like coaster thing. Um, it's pretty cool by itself and it would I'd usually print it in either solid blue or solid gray or whatever and that'd be fine. Um, but I never really got any satisfaction off printing anything like this because, you know, it kind of ran out of, like, value. It just didn't look great. Like, you know, it was okay. It was cool. But now that I can do it in multicolor, it's just so much better. And, like, I actually find myself printing stuff like this for around the house because it actually looks nice and, you know, as well as serving a purpose. Um, so, yeah, like, and other things like when I'm doing my own designs or whatever, if I want to put my logo on it or something like that, it actually makes sense to do that now because I can have my like my channel logo or whatever in the right colors. Another way it's come in really handy is if I'm selling a product and that product has like four or more whatever color skews, I can load those four filaments onto the AMS and if someone orders it, I can just print it off straight away without having to change filament or do anything like that. I can just tell the printer, oh, I want that product in pink. I want that product in gray. And it will go and do that for me. And that, that's really valuable to me. Because now if I have a fleet of these machines, um, you know, I can have all those products lined up for each machine and all the color skews. But one thing you do need to watch out for, I guess, is wasted filament. So in between color changes, it purges. They call it filament poop. Uh, here's a shot of it. But there's it is quite a lot. Um, I have found out a way, though, to reduce it by quite a bit and I'm going to do a video on that soon or a short maybe um, but yeah it is something you need to consider you can go through a lot of filament when using the AMS especially when purging this printer also comes with a camera um, it's a low FPS camera it's it's okay if, if you want to check your print like through the app but it doesn't have like spaghetti detective or anything like that y you can get time lapses but they're not great um, it also has a light, um, but to be honest with you, the light, you would probably better off buying a candle and placing it next to the printer. Before we continue on with the video, I'd like to have a shout out for the sponsor of this video. Uh, the sponsor of this video is PCBWay. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay offers PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, and now they're offering CNC and 3D printing services. Let's start with PCBWay. It's as easy as getting your online quote, uploading your PCB file, You'll get an order review, payment, and then they'll offer you real-time fabrication tracking through their website. I want to say a big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the video. So one of the things I wanted to do really quickly with this printer was just print off some test prints. I expected it to perform very well uh, in pretty much all areas, uh, but you never know. You might catch them off guard. 
Uh, I was wrong, and to be fair, you'd have to get up very early in the morning to catch Bamboo Labs slipping. Uh, this machine performed excellently, to be honest with you. I, besides for my P1P, I actually don't have another machine that performs as well. And I was really surprised, uh, especially from a, be a bed slinger. I also printed this overhang test, and as you can see, it performed really well. Uh, it failed at 80 degrees, but it's pretty good from 70 back. Um, so I also wanted to test bed adhesion. So what I did was I took one of my own products, which is this like block shape, and I placed it on its corner. So basically, like at a 45 degree angle, and just printed it to see what would happen. And yeah, it stuck really well. As soon as the bed cooled, it released and fell over. But yeah, I was really happy with it. So the last kind of test print I went off and done was this Benchy. Um, I don't really consider Benchy's a test anymore. Like most printers should be able to print it at this point. But you can see it turned out really well. Um, you know, nothing to complain about. Some stringing, but I think that might have been my fault. I think I might have had the temperature set a bit too high. So I'm just going to give you my quick, like, closing thoughts on this machine. I haven't had this machine long enough to do, like, a full in-depth review of it and to let you know, what, it, like, long-term what it's like. But so far, I, it's been an excellent machine. Um, it, it offers so many features for the price, so... I think for the combo that I have, it comes in about 500 euros. For the printer by itself, it's about 329 euro. I'll put the dollars somewhere. Um, but like for that price and the amount of features you get, and I know some people are going to say, oh, the bill volume is only 180. But 98% of the things you print will never be your full bill volume ever. Like 180 is a perfect size, really, because it's, you know, it's quicker to heat up because it's smaller. Most things you're going to print are going to fit on a, um yeah no i think it's an excellent machine so one in like really good use case i've had for this machine so far is like as a dedicated prototyping machine because this machine is really quick so it can like knock out prototypes very fast but then it's also like virtually silent uh so i'm not i'm not kicking up like my p1p or any of my crowded machines that are a lot louder than this machine um and like you know i'm not having that constant background noise or waking other people up if i want to prototype something and this thing just whacks it out. And, like, okay, it doesn't do ABS or polycarbonate or nylon. It can't. It's not enclosed. But, like, you know, printing off those quick PLA parts, knocking them out, and just going, oh, okay. I can validate it off that and then hit another printout if I need to. And it just works so well. And, like, I think, like, that's kind of the strength of this printer is if you already have a printer, this is an excellent secondary printer to have. Especially like if you don't have the ability to do multicolor, now you can. I haven't tried doing multi-materials, so doing like TPU, PLA, or PLA and ABS or something like that. Well, I can't print ABS, but you know what I mean. So, you know, that's definitely something I'm going to try out in a future video. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. So thanks again, guys, for watching. And uh, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, there should be a link to another video on screen right now. Uh, feel free to watch that if it helps you. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.